Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Cavaliers My NBA series here on NBA 2K21 for the PlayStation 5. As today, we continue the early part here of season number two, the first season, however, on the next gen consoles. So we went through the first two games of the season last episode. Normally we're going to simulate a lot of games in every episode, but I wanted to play opening game along with the home opener. We unfortunately lost our first game of the season against the Charlotte Hornets only by two points, thanks to a game-winning shot by P.J. Washington, who scored 29 points, including 23 points in the first half. And then we beat the Bucks in our home opener. Obi Toppin led the way with 25 points, the second-year man out of Dayton with a very good performance. Our rookie, Cedric Garrett, the eighth overall pick, has had a really good start to his NBA career. Now, granted, he has only played two games, but he looks like the real deal and well worth that eighth overall pick. Let's take a quick breeze through, through our stats. Now, as I said, we've only played two games, so... Take these numbers for what you will. Obviously, they are going to change a lot. We have 80 more games left to go, so you don't really have to take these stats seriously at the moment. We're not going to overreact if one player, <clears throat> Jeremy Grant, <clears throat> is not doing too well. Grant specifically on defense. I mean, in that Hornets game, Steven Adams just absolutely dominated him. And maybe starting Jeremy Grant at center is not the greatest of ideas, but we're going to keep the experiment going for a little bit longer to see if we can try to salvage the idea of Grant as our starting center. So we're going to simulate this next week, go up to this game against the Pistons, and we would go 1-2 on our next three games, all three of which were on the road. The first one was in Detroit against the Pistons. We lost by 22. Cedric Garrett was the leading scorer, so it is good to see him playing well in a simulated game, and it's not just that I happened to play well with him in the first two games of the season. We then beat the Bucks despite a triple-double from Giannis. Obi Toppin had a double-double, 21 points, 14 rebounds, and a bunch of guys scored in the double figures, which is really good to see. Not including Cedric Garrett. He had 9 points, but he also had 8 assists. Then we lose to the Sixers. Joel Embiid scored 47 points and grabbed 24 rebounds. So the Jeremy Grant experiment does not seem to be doing well in either games that he play or in simulated games. But on the right side, through 5 games, Cedric Garrett looks like the real deal. We still have 77 games more to go, but he looks like he is well worth the 8th overall selection. Welcome everybody to the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse here in Cleveland, Ohio, as the 1-4 Detroit Pistons going to be taking on the 2-3 Cleveland Cavaliers in a battle of two young teams in the Central Division. Regular starters today for the Cavs, for the Pistons, it'll be Killian Hayes, Tim Hardaway Jr., for rookie Jaden Kenson, Christian Wood, and Tony Bradley. There's Yusuf Diafafa Fobo doing some pregame rituals. He may be inserted to the starting lineup if Jeremy Grant continues to struggle at center. And already, the Cavs allow a put-back dunk. That's for rookie Jaden Kenzen, the fourth overall pick out of USC. 6 to nothing, hot start for the Pistons. But there's Kevin Porta Jr. slamming it on top of Kenzen, a player who the Pistons drafted over Cedric Garrett and statistically has been worse than Cedric Garrett. There's Tony Bradley with the layup, 10-4. Bradley again misses it, gets the offensive board, and gets the and one. Kind of a mismatch having Dennis Schroeder under there. I don't know why Schroeder was there. He is the point guard of this team, not the center. 14-6, slow start here for Cleveland offensively as it's for rookie Cedric Garrett for three. Garrett's arguably been the Cavs' best player, and he has been a backup so far this year. There's TJ McConnell with the layup. 18-13, Evan Fournier with it, he loses it, gets it back, Fournier now for three, Chetty Osman cannot catch up, and the Pistons are now up by eight, a little bit over a minute to go in the quarter, as here's Cedric Garrett trying to drive inside, nice layup by Garrett, despite some solid defense by Sekou Dumbuya, 23-19, late here in the quarter, Blake Griffin misses the layup and gets it back, I don't know what Yusuf Diafafafobo was doing behind the hoop, and Darius Garland has to heave up a shot before the end of a quarter. It is no good. The Pistons lead at 25-19. Cleveland's offense has not looked good so far. They played better down the stretch, but a slow start for the Cavs on the offensive side of the floor as we go to the second quarter. Killa Cam Reddish for three. Reddish has been a very nice scoring piece off the bench this year. He's been quite efficient as Blake Griffin slams it down 
Oh, Jeremy Grant absolutely powering inside. 29-24, there's Griffin now for three, showing that he's not just some guy who can dunk. He is an all-around scorer. Blake, again, from the other side, he connects from deep. Blake Griffin is red hot. He has become the sixth man of this Pistons team with Christian Wood and Tony Bradley starting in the front court. Nice three from Colin Sexton. He is seven. Sexton again greens it once more. Hot play here from Colin Sexton in the second. 37-34. Here's Kevin Porter Jr. No good. But Jeremy Grant actually makes a nice play inside for the putback. 37-36 with about two and a half minutes to go in the quarter. There's Tony Bradley with the slam assisted by the French point guard Killian Hayes. 41-36. Look at the rookie. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo. Big Fafa from three. 41-39. It's the lefty Killian Hayes off the catch and shoot. 44-39 now. Dennis the menace inside for the slam. Battle of international point guards in this game with Killian Hayes and Dennis Schroeder. 44-41. There's Colin Sexton in the corner to tie it at 44. Pistons trying to regain the lead as Evan Fournier will drill it from three. 47-46. Cavs going for the last second shot. Sexton step back on Fournier for the lead. He got it. And for the first time today... The Cleveland Cavaliers have a lead, 48-47, to going into the halftime break. A very tight game so far. Blake Griffin with 16 points off the bench for the Pistons. Colin Sexton leading the way with 15 for the Cavs as we go to the third quarter. Pistons now back up, 49-48, as it's Killian Hayes for three. That was six-point lead for the Pistons. TJ McConnell, the lob for Blake off of the layup. Detroit with a hot start here in the quarter. 56 to 48. The Cavs have not scored yet, but that'll change. Cam Reddish slams it on Blake Griffin, who just looks dazed and confused. What happened there? 57 51 now. Garrett pump fakes on Janan Musa, and he makes the three. Nice shot for Garrett. He has eight, and it is a three point lead for the Pistons. Christian Wood with the screen from Blake. Trying to get inside, but he loses it. Gorlin with the steal. Passes it out for Jeremy Grant, who gets the slam going upstairs where Grandma hides the cookies. 57-56 now. Blake with the and one poster on Obi Toppin. Usually Toppin is the one posterizing players, but not today. What a move by Blake. 60-56. It's Janan Musa with the layup. Making it a six-point lead for the Pistons. Cam Reddish misses. However, big Fafa. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo with the layup. 62-58 now. McConnell. He is blocked by big Fafa. McConnell gets it back. And he is blocked again by big Fafa. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo, the rookie out of Senegal, with back-to-back -back blocks. Off the inbound, Blake Griffin trying to drive inside. And he is blocked. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo with three blocks within the span of about 15 seconds. Cedric Garrett makes the mid-ranger 62 to 60. Here's Blake now, gonna try to go for three. Psych! Yusuf Diafafa Fobo with four blocks within the span of about a minute of play, bullying Blake Griffin inside for the layup. This kid is pretty good. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo making plays on both sides of the floor. Blake Griffin trying to get some vengeance after getting blocked twice as he gets the dunk. 66-64. Pistons unable to make a play there towards the end of the third quarter. However, they do have the lead in what has been a very back-and-forth game, a very defensive-oriented game. We've had a pretty low score up to this point as we go to the fourth. Pistons up by two, but that'll change. Obi Toppin with the and one slam. Tony Bradley is the one call for the foul. A very nice amount of points on the scoreboard for the Cavs, that being 69 until Jeremy Grant gets the slam. 70 to 71 now. Porter to the corner for OB Toppin. He gets the three ball. Toppin with 10 today, and it's now a four point lead for the Pistons. Dennis Schroeder in that same corner. He greens it. Now a seven point lead for the Cavs with five minutes to go. Tim Hardaway, fade away. No good. Tony Bradley is there at the board. Back to Hardaway. He will get a pick from Christian Wood. He's going to stop, pop, and drop. Tim Hardaway Jr. for three. Six-point lead for the Cavs with four minutes to go. 
Here's Killian Hayes, the former seventh overall pick, one of the top young playmakers in the NBA, getting it to Tim Hardaway Jr. for another three. Pistons down by three as Dennis Schroeder with a nice stop and pop inside for the layup. He has 11 points on the day. So now it is a five-point lead here for the Cavs. There's Jaden Kenson with the slam, one of the most talented players in last year's class. Kenson arguably has a higher ceiling than anybody in the 2021 draft as there's Blake with the layup, 84-85. Cavs up with two minutes to go. Kevin Porter Jr. posterizing Jaden Kenson. Let's take a look at this one again. Porter showing the rookie how it's done. Blake with another basket. He is unstoppable right now, 86-87. Inside for Tony Bradley. He will give the Pistons the lead with about a minute to go. Now under a minute, Blake with the basketball. He loses it. Jeremy Grant with the steal. Passes it for Dennis Schroeder, who will get the layup in for the lead with about 40 and a half seconds to go. Killian feeds the ball to Blake. Who else deserves the ball at this time? Nobody else. As Blake makes the layup, poor defense by Obi Toppin. Not a lot of time left as Dennis Schroeder tries to drive inside. And he is fouled by Killian Hayes. So Dennis Schroeder, down by one, gets to go to the line to give Cleveland the lead. His first three throw, nothing but net. The second three throw from Schroeder, even sweeter than the first one. Dennis Schroeder goes two for two from the line. And the Cavaliers have a one-point lead with 26.7 seconds to go. If I'm the Piskins, I try to feed Blake the ball, but Blake is not in the game for some odd reason. Tim Hardaway Jr. does make the layup, so now the Pistons are up with about 16 seconds. The Cavs are going to let this one run out, try to go for a last-second shot. It's Colin Sexton at the top of the key. Driving inside, Sexton with the slam! And the Cavs take the lead with 2.7 seconds to go. Hardaway, the full-court heave is no good. And the Cleveland Cavaliers win their first game of the season against a team not named the Milwaukee Bucks. 93-92, your final. A back-and-forth intense fourth quarter as the Cavaliers improve to 500. Callan Sexton, the leading scorer for Cleveland. He had 21, including the game winner. Schroeder, Toppin, and Garrett also finished in double figures. Nine points for Yusuf Diafafafobo. He also had five blocks, and I think those were all in five consecutive shots, which is absolutely wild. Diafafafobo has so much potential. If he can tap into it, he's going to be an absolute beast for us going forward. For the Pistons, they were led by a dominant scoring performance from Blake Griffin. Even though he's a bench player now, he is still doing his thing. He dropped 32 points on 26 shots in 8 minutes of play. Double-doubles for both Killian Hayes and Tony Bradley. Tim Hardaway Jr., the only other player in double figures. And a pretty quiet performance from the rookie Jaden Kenson. Only 4 points in this one. So we're going to simulate these next 5 games. Go up to this New Year's game against Utah. Now that I'm seeing it, we do have a Christmas game against Washington. And I kind of wish I played that because, well, it's on Christmas, but I missed it and we ended up getting smothered. We lost by 35 on national TV to the Wizards, but we do go 3-2 and two in that span. So we are now 6-5 and five, and there are a few changes I do want to make after seeing the results of these games. We are over 500, but we have by far the least amount of rebounds per game. And this is because we do not have an actual center starting at center. Jeremy Grant is like fifth on our team in rebounds, and considering he is the starter at center, that is pretty unacceptable. So, Yusuf Diafafafobo will become the starting center simply because he's more of a traditional center. He's a better rebounder, and we're still going to probably try to give Jeremy Grant more minutes than Diafafafobo. However, I do want Diafafafobo to be starting games and finishing games. That's not it for the lineup changes. Cedric Garrett is still playing really well, and I think he belongs in the starting lineup. Kevin Porter Jr. has underperformed a little bit, and I think Porter's best role is on the bench anyway as a high-volume microwave scorer, so that's what we're going to do. Cedric Garrett and Yusuf Diafafafobo have entered the starting lineups. I know it says Diafafafobo is playing six minutes. I'll explain in a second why that is actually not true. Kevin Porter Jr. and Jeremy Grant will move to the bench. We're giving our bench guys the most minutes, but again, that's not actually true because the listed minutes here are not actually how many minutes they're going to play. 
I go by the rotation timeline. So as you can see, Diafafa Fobo is going to play about 20 minutes per game. Jeremy Grant will be playing about 25 minutes per game rather than the six minutes Diafafa Fobo was listed at earlier. I want Diafafa Fobo and Grant to get fairly even time. I do want Jeremy Grant to be playing a little bit more, but I want Diafafa Fobo to be starting games and finishing games. So that's what we're going to do here, entering this game against the Utah Jazz, the first game with these lineup changes. We will see how successful it is once again at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. Cavs 6-5, and five, Jazz 5-6 five and six on the season. No Rudy Gobert today for the Jazz. He is a day-to-day -day injury and will be out. Dwayne Dedman, the former Cleveland Cavalier, will be starting at center. As you can see, the Cavs are tied for the 8th seed with the Indiana Pacers, who are led by the number one overall draft pick, Cassius Calvin. Derek Rose, Donovan Mitchell, Royce O'Neal, Boyan Bogdanovich, and Dwayne Dedman is the starting lineup for the Jazz. For the Cavs, these two, Cedric Garrett and Yusuf Diafafafobo, dancing here in pregame, will both be making their first career NBA starts. These two players are foundational building blocks for this Cavaliers team. They've both been really solid, specifically Garrett off the bench. And I'm very excited to see what they do with a little bit more minutes now and officially as starters. Diafafa Fobo and Deadman are there for the tip off, and it will go to Big Fafa and the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's very refreshing to actually have a somewhat tall center. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo stands at about 7 1 as he bullies Dwayne Deadman for the first bucket of the game. Tied at two now, here's Derek Rose, still one of the better point guards in the NBA, driving in for the slam, showing those athletic gifts he has. 4-2, Donovan Mitchell sagging off on Colin Sexton, and he drains the three. 7-6 now, Garrett passes it out for OB Toppin. He knew that was in once he shot it. Cavs off to an early lead. Unlike the Pistons game, the offense has actually gotten off to a high start as there's D. Rose with the and one. Yusuf Diafafafobo is called for the foul. 9-10 now. Diafafafobo with it. Going to try to drive inside, and he gets the powerful one-handed slam going upstairs where Grandma hides the cookies. 9-12. Here's Boyan Bogdanovich for three. Solid defense from Obi Toppin, but the ball still goes in. 16-12 now. Cavs up as there is Donovan Mitchell. Catch and shoot three for Mitchell. His first basket of the game. 16 to 15 now. There's Sexton on the step back. It rims in and out, but Diafafafobo gets the, foot, the put back. Yusuf Diafafafobo already has eight points today. His career high is nine, which he got in the Pistons game that we saw earlier today. Nice layup for Bogdanovich. Cavs call time. 25 24 now. Jazz up with about 40 seconds to go in the quarter as Kevin Porter Jr. in his first game this season off the bench gets the slam. 25-26 now, Garland got to pass it out in the corner for Cam Reddish. His three is no good. That'll do it for quarter number one. We've got ourselves a good one. The Cleveland Cavaliers lead this one by a mere one point as it is 26-25. Let's go to the second now, 28-25. as Derek Rose inside, driving by Garland with ease. He gets the dunk. That's former Cleveland Cavaliers legend Derek Rose to be exact. 29 to 30 now. Kevin Porter Jr. makes the three. Jazz now down by two. Donovan Mitchell trying to drive past Sexton, and the layup is good. Nice defense from Sexton, but Donovan Mitchell is really hard to stop inside. 33 apiece as Darius Garland makes the three. Cavs up by three. Kevin Porter Jr. going to try to double the lead, and he is successful. 12 points here in the first half for KPJ as it is now 37-43. Donovan Mitchell again with the layup. Donovan Mitchell has certainly developed into one of the top scorers in the game, as there is OB Toppin with a powerful two-handed dunk. He found the lane and wanted no mercy on that hoop. 39-35 now. Here's Cedric Garrett inside for the layup. Garrett now with six. He's been a little bit quiet today, but he has a different role as a starter and is around more scorers more often as Donovan Mitchell makes the three. 42-47. Dennis Schroeder with the and one. His first basket of the game. Mitchell is called for the foul. And the Cavaliers now leave this one by eight with under two minutes to go in the half as Grant gets it to Yusuf Diafafafobo. His first game in scoring in the double figures. And we are still in the first half. 
eight point lead as Cam Reddish with the and one, his first basket of the game. And it is now an 11 point lead for the Cavs. Donovan Mitchell trying to fuel the comeback as he gets the dunk. It's been a big second quarter for Mitchell. He is 15 in this quarter alone. Last second shot here before halftime from Schroeder is good. Mitchell does not have time to heave up a full court shot. That'll do it for half number one. The Cavs looking good. They lead it 59 to 48. Both sides of the ball. Cleveland is playing well. Donovan Mitchell does have 20 points. However, Yusuf Diafafafobo and Kevin Porter Jr. both have 12 points. Obi Toppin has a realistic shot of getting a triple-double as well for what it's worth as Sexton opens up the third quarter of the three. 50-62. Mitchell loses it. Sexton with the steal. He is going to pass it out for Schroeder. Inside for Big Fafa. Yusuf Diafafafobo for the dunk. 52-66. Obi Toppin with the lob for Colin Sexton. Usually it's the other way around. Sexton lobbing it up for Toppin, but I guess it's opposite day. I don't know. 52-68 now. Cavs with a comfortable lead. Mitchell inside for Dwayne Dedman. He gets the behind-the-back dunk. 54-70 now. Look at Cedric Garrett. Finding the rim with ease. Getting the slam. 56-72 now. It's Kevin Porter Jr. at the end one. And the Cavs are really increasing their lead. That's Royce O'Neal with the foul. 60-74 now. Sexton passing it out in the corner for Cedric Garrett, the rookie out of Arizona. Making the three. 60 to 77 now. Nice dunk by Cassius Stanley, the former Duke Blue Devil. 62 77 now. Garland misses the three, gets his own rebound inside for Toppin. Back to Garland for three. It's good. Obi Toppin now with seven points, seven rebounds, and eight assists. Very odd stat line for Toppin as Darius Garland gets the steal. Garland gonna lob it up for Obi Toppin. Toppin is one of the best dunkers in the NBA. He showcased it at the University of Dayton and has showcased that here in his first two seasons as a Cavalier. 66-86, Garland trying to extend the lead. He is unsuccessful. A big third quarter of action vote for the Cavs. Let's see if they can just try to hold on to this lead and get the win as we enter the fourth quarter. Early and one for Dennis Schroeder. That is Derek Rose with the foul. 72-93 now. Mitchell with the crossover and the slam. Donovan Mitchell, the beautiful one-handed dunk. About four and a half minutes to go. Cavs up by 21. Here is Boyan Bogdanovich beating the shot clock. Nice shot, despite good defense by Toppin. 76-97, it's Garrett with the slam. Cedric Garrett now with 13 points on the day. Cavs up by 23 with about three and a half to go. Deadman inside for Donovan Mitchell for the slam. Yusuf Diafafa Fobo showing his poor lateral quickness there. That is one of his big issues, but he has had himself a really good game today as Dwayne Deadman gets the and one. 81 to 99. Now it's Mitchell with the slam. Cavs only up by 18. OB Toppin with the dunk. Another beautiful slam for Toppin. And that is how this game will end. Derrick Rose going to dribble off the clock. And the Cleveland Cavaliers with a really nice, convincing victory over one of the more talented teams in the NBA in the Utah Jazz. 107-92 is your final. Cleveland with a big win as they improved to 7-5. A really nice start to the season for the Cavs as they potentially try to compete for a playoff spot. Yusuf Diafafafobo in his first career start with 22 points and 7 rebounds. That 22 points leads the team, and he certainly looks like he's going to be locked in as that starting center going forward. Obi Toppin and Dennis Schroeder both with double-doubles. I imagine that's a career high in assists for Obi Toppin. I don't know if he's ever had 10. Meanwhile, for the Jazz, Donovan Mitchell with a fairly quiet 36 points. Derek Rose and Dwayne Dedman also in the double figures, but unfortunately for them, it is not enough. A big win here for the Cleveland Cavaliers. That is how today's episode is going to end. What do you guys think of the team so far and the little roster moves we made? Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I'm out. Peace.